Well, coming up on today's show, the Netherlands is now the top market in Europe for the Tesla Model S. The Aston Martin Rapid E has more details. And a report claims to know about Tesla reworking the Model 3s. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are in the world, hello and welcome to the Wednesday, the 22nd of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. Uh, They are the first marketplace made specifically for electric vehicles. Now, they made this totally free marketplace that really simplifies buying and selling and helping you learn about EVs along the way as well. Go check them out, myev.com. Apologies for the cold continuing today, as somebody on Twitter put today. Listen to the podcast, sounds like you should be in quarantine. (laughs) Maybe they're right. Uh, We'll kick off with some of the best tweets from Electrification 2018. It's a big event happening at Long Beach, California. And I like this one from the official uh, Twitter account. There are 918,182 plug-in EVs in the US, and there's been a rise in EV sales year on year for 35 consecutive months says Britta Gross of GM. To learn more, attend the electric transportation breakout sessions at hashtag electrification2018. Jeffrey Tomek used the hashtag to say the Tesla investor and board member. Ira Ehrenpress says that the energy industry must innovate and defy sceptics. Change is at our feet. And Kyle Cherick was quoting Ira as well when opening the event, the conference, with a reminder that in the early stages of major transformations, there are always many sceptics, but the revolution is happening. Uh, You can check out that hashtag, Electrification2018, on Twitter to follow the events of that conference. Well, Matthias Schmidt is uh, somebody who's well worth following on Twitter in terms of data and insights. If you like your stats like I do, to to do with um, where different models are selling around the world, Netherlands is now Europe's largest market for the Tesla Model S. So looking at the first six months of this year, now the numbers are finally filtering through and everyone's signing off January to July. Uh, The Netherlands sold 1,927 Tesla Model S's. Norway, only just behind, though Norway traditionally a big market for Tesla, 1,877. Matthias says that I expect Netherlands to stay in front for the rest of the year as 2019 orders being brought forward before those benefit-in-kind tax increases kick in on January the 1st, 2019. So the Tesla Model S, the top five markets are in Europe, Netherlands, Norway, UK, Germany and Switzerland. Well, more details emerging online today about the Aston Martin Rapid E. And we love it when a CEO uh, goes online to spill the beans themselves. The president and group CEO of Aston Martin, Andy Palmer, took to Twitter uh, to talk about the new Rapid E. I must remember to put a space in that. Otherwise, it looks like the new Aston Martin Rapide. Sounds like a Skoda. Anyway, he is Andy at Aston. If you want to follow Andy Palmer on uh, on Twitter, he is at Andy at Aston. And he says this, and I quote, a significant step forward on Aston Martin's road to zero capability. This is the first production intent battery for the Rapid E. Aston Martin's first EV. The significance uh, is it's also 800 volts, likely to be an industry first when launched to 155 lucky customers at the end of 2019. End quote, end tweet. Yes, I would say 155 exceptionally lucky customers. And it will be the first 800 volt EV system if they can make it to the market quicker than the Porsche Taycan, which, I mean, the Porsche is always referred to as a 2020 model year, but I don't know when it'll be actually out, out, out on sale in your driveway, in your garage. Uh, but uh, the CEO there and president of Aston Martin thinking that they're going to get there first before Porsche. Uh, looking at the picture, by the way, that he tweeted, a very simple, not quite a skateboard design, you know, that kind of Tesla style, four wheels on each corner and then a completely flat battery pack. There's a few more lumps and bumps and control systems and things in there. And I would think things like uh, converters and inverters but uh, fascinating to go and look at that picture. He did follow up with this some uh, some more information, by the way, and he gets a little bit a little bit geeky in this. But you'll love this if you like your stats. He says the Aston Martin Rapid E will use an 800 volt battery technology when launched at the end of 2019. The higher voltage facilitates fast charging times as energy E equals VX IX T, where V is voltage. I is current and T 
is time. Faster charge time, so faster T than faster charge time. T equals E, your energy, divided by, and then that's、uh, V X I. Achieved by increasing voltage, nerdy but bloody good, he says.、Uh, more information to come, but key attributes include the ability to have usable performance for laps of the Nurburgring and a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Really looking forward to Aston Martin making their first EV. Well, moving on to Tesla, and a new report claims to know about Tesla's reworking of the Model 3s. According to Business Insider, and I quote, internal documents show that Tesla had to rework more than 4,300 of the 5,000 Model 3 vehicles it built during the last week of June, when it hit its critical production target.、Uh, end quote. With an average time of reworking being 37 minutes. Now, I hadn't heard of Business. I was a late comer to Business Insider. I hadn't. I had never heard of it. I never. I needed. Never needed to come. Across the publication, until I started coming across these incredibly critical articles of Tesla and Elon Musk earlier this year, and some of them、uh, pretty inflammatory, in my opinion, and also some of them that I just find hard to believe because they quote sources, unnamed sources, or people. You always see the phrase "familiar with the matter." Now, I love great journalism. And when I spot it, I love to read great journalism. But there's always that red flag when you see. Sources, people familiar with the matter, and again, I don't know much about Business Insider. Completely new to me.、Uh, I don't know how big or small they are. They seem to do a lot of articles that are critical about Tesla.、Um, so,、uh, just bear that in mind. But Tesla did feel the need to respond with this statement, and I quote: "Our goal is to produce a perfect car." For every customer, in order to ensure the highest quality, we review every vehicle for even the smallest refinement before it leaves the factory. Dedicated inspection teams track every car throughout every shop in the assembly line, and every vehicle is then subjected to an additional quality control process towards the end of the line. And all of this happens before a vehicle leaves the factory and is delivered to a customer. Notably, Tesla has the highest customer satisfaction level in the entire global auto industry, and. Relative to every other car company in the world, Tesla's the most customers who say their next car will be a Tesla. Well, that is the true test of customer happiness. They say. They continue. We've seen huge improvements on Model 3 quality. Our customer satisfaction scores for Model 3 quality have averaged 90% since January, with steady improvement through the year. Even as the number of cars cars delivered has rapidly multiplied, and our factory efficiency has also improved with the number of labour hours. And this is the key. I'll just break in here. This is the key to remember. And they say this: the number of labour hours per Model 3 produced. Declining by nearly 30% since last quarter. Finally, a customer never has to worry because if they're unhappy with their car when they receive it, they can either give it back for a full refund, allow us to address issues, or ask for an entirely new car. End quote. Not many car makers will give you that option if you just don't like it or just want a full refund. It's the way that any buying experience should be, whether it's a car or a mobile phone or or whatever. If you're not happy with the quality,、uh, that's the crucial stat in there, though. The labour hours to make each car has declined by thirty percent. They are making serious gains. We're moving on to a newcomer in the EV space. Vacuum giant Dyson has trademarked a term. That term is digital motor in the European market as it prepares to launch the first of what it's thought to be three new EVs. Says Andrew Chesterton for CarsGuide.com.au. The company sunk more than 3.5 billion dollars equivalent. Into their electric car project so well, their automotive division has 400 employees and is soon to be home to 300 more. Now, while the name Digital Motor is now one that's exclusive to Dyson, the technology certainly isn't. With the term being used to describe brushless electromagnetic motors, including those used. In other EVs, well, James Dyson said in a Wired interview, and I quote: "When we started this four years ago, Tesla was still very small. Dieselgate hadn't happened, and no one was really considering electric cars. So we're not Johnny Come Latelys on this.、Uh, we had seen it coming, invested in batteries, and started our project." End quote. And if I can chip in with the most ridiculous personal observation slash opinion on this one, we have owned many vacuum cleaners over the years. I can't believe I'm talking about vacuum cleaners on a on a podcast. But last week, bought our first Dyson vacuum cleaner, and again, I, I've heard myself say this before the words have come out of my mouth, and it's already in my head sounds ridiculous. 
I can't get over how good the motors are. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed that I can barely hear this thing working, and yet it works better than any other vacuum we've ever owned. I'll stop talking about vacuum cleaners now uh, while I have a shred of dignity left. Well, moving on to everyone's favourite topic, beer, or rather the Ambev Brewery. Uh, Ambev Brewery is going to order some EV trucks, and a lot of them. More than a third of its third-party fleet is going to be composed of EV trucks in the next five years. By 2023, Ambev. Well, they own things like Schkoll and Brahma and Antarctica and uh, Guana, and they own loads of beers and spirits in, in the... Uh, that kind of world. They announced that by 2023, 1,600 electric trucks are going to be in use. That's a huge order, and that order has gone to Volkswagen, and it's going to be used to transport beverages. Now, with the partnership, 35% of the fleet serving the brewery is going to consist of clean, energy-powered vehicles, no longer emitting over 30.4 thousand tonnes of carbon in its logistic chain every year. Well, the deal is uh, part of VW's largest ever for this cargo segment this year, 1,600 electric trucks being made by VW. That is great news. The first truck to be part of the fleet uh, will be the VW E-Delivery. It's going to hit the streets later this year, opening the first test phase to determine the most appropriate technology for Ambev's operations, the kind of routes they do and things like that. The model is going to be 100% recharged with EV power from clean sources, sourced from wind and solar. Well, there's surging demand for EVs all around the world. Global sales of EVs cracked the 400,000 barrier in the second quarter of this year. It's rising 77% from a year earlier to 411,000 electric vehicles. According to a report by Bloomberg NEF, China, with 225,000 units, not only maintained its lead, but outsold the rest of the world combined. Europe had 22% of EV sales last quarter, North America 19%, and I found that on Bloomberg Business Week. I'll put a link to the full article in the show notes. Two more stories to get through today. Brokerage Morgan Stanley, they've halted their coverage of Tesla. Is that good? Is it bad? Well, it's potentially a sign the US bank may be doing business directly with Tesla. So they could be exploring options to go private, says Reuters. Goldman Sachs also dropped its coverage of Tesla last week, shortly before confirming it was acting as their financial advisor on a matter related to the automaker. So those people that think the idea of Tesla being privatised is a dream and it's never going to happen, now another massive brokerage suspending their coverage of Tesla, uh, with most people thinking it's because they are directly involved in the privatisation deal. And finally, BMW put out a weird video today. I mean, I love it, but it's slightly strange. It's one minute long. And they just put a very simple, uh, I found this on the Canadian BMW uh, press office site, but I think it's been everywhere. The BMW i3, said this press release, the BMW i3 carries much electricity on board, e often even more than what is needed for driving. This video shows what could be done with it. The BMW i engineers are working on it. And then they have put in brackets, using the BMW i3 as an electricity dispenser and the video which is a minute long shows a gentleman living in a hut on a hillside with no houses for hundreds of miles around but simply a tin hut and he has his bmw i3 outside it on the gravel driveway he's having flashbacks to his life when he used to wear a suit answering his cell phone working in a busy office and it flat it comes back to reality where he is living on his own in the wilderness and he's packing things inside his bmw i3 and he drives down to what looks like a farmer's market and he's selling cheese and fresh coffee and he plugs all of his machines into his BMW i3 uh, to run things like the cheese slicer and the coffee machine that he packs away and drives home as well. They've titled it The Simple Life. Well, not that the current BMW i3 has the largest battery, if I'm honest, uh, but a previous report on Bimmer Today said this, according to our information, intensive preparations are underway in the background for the debut of a BMW i3 120 amp hour, which promises even greater coverage with an even larger lithium ion battery. The more powerful battery could increase the standard range, according to NEDC, uh, which is the way of measuring cars soon to go, over 350 kilometres and also appease the last range doubters. Now, my own experience of the 94 amp-hour BMW i3 is uh, 
And my brother has uh, has that one. He's had it a few months now. Uh, he's got the range extender. And I must say that all the times that we've uh, been out in that one, um, and that's my experience of the, the bigger battery i3, uh, it seems that it's super efficient, uh, even when you're not driving on Eco. Is it called Eco Pro Plus in the BMW? And it seems to use its power really well, be super efficient car. And I've been mightily, mightily impressed with the BMW i3. Well, keep your comments coming in for this week's question of the week, all about, funnily enough, electric range. Uh, this question has been posed by the gang at myev.com. They ask, do you really need all of that electric range? How much range is enough? And what's your ideal range? Well, leave your comments on YouTube and Facebook, and you can email hello at evnewsdaily.com, and we'll compile them and read them out later in the week. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to the 63, now 63 patrons of this podcast on patreon.com. Their generosity means if you are one of them, your generosity uh, makes me, uh, helps me produce this program. And hopefully we entertain and inform thousands of listeners every day about a brighter future. If it's something that you would consider doing, you can check out the page. It is patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. That's patreon.com slash evnewsdaily daily if you want to have a look at that in the meantime if you want to listen to some older episodes great interview last weekend by the way of jonathan levy from ev go big charging network in north america fascinating to talk to someone who is at the sharp end of charging evs uh, that and lots more to download on all the usual podcast places if you could do one thing for me um, if it's not patreon it's leave a review because that helps so much. Just a few words, little five-star rate, or one star, do what you want, uh, on any of those platforms, and it really helps. Come and say hi on the socials by looking for EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.